Corey Heim's rise to NASCAR championship contender is an intriguing one to follow because in terms of NASCAR, it's about the right time. We've seen time and time again where the driver has matured over many years in the circuit, but the race team doesn't have the equipment. Same thing on the flip side. You have a team like Thor Sport that has the best resources, the best people working on these trucks. But if you have an inexperienced driver tearing up equipment every single week, you are not going to compete for a championship. That's what makes Corey Heim and Tricon Garage's rise something that is incredible especially in this era because Corey Heim had the talent. We knew that he could go out there and win races. He was clutch when it mattered at KBM. The question was, how would Heim do with the Tricon Garage now moving to Toyota? Would they be able to transcend to the level of Kyle Busch Motorsports or were we going to see what we saw from their other full-time drivers when they were David Gilland racing? That question was answered when Corey Heim went out and won Martinsville. Now, was it a Mickey win? Some would disagree, although Christian Eckes believes it was. But with Martinsville Speedway, it's rare to see a driver or team back into a win at Martinsville. For a second win, he went into mid-Ohio, a challenging road course on its own, and got the job done, which put Corey Heim into the position to make the playoffs, advance to the round of eight, and then capitalized when all the pressure was packed down on him. Corey Heim late in the race took advantage of lap traffic and perhaps his own teammate Tanner Gray giving him a little bit of help in order to secure his spot in the championship four. However, that's not even the most impressive thing about this season for Corey Heim. It's the fact that he's consistent. When I sit there and look at which is more solid, a Rock or Corey Heim, I'm going with Corey Heim based on his 19 top 10 finishes in 22 races. And I know these aren't the championships that Hornaday and Crafton used to win, but if we use the old format, Corey Heim would have locked up the championship already, and that's impressive considering that Corey Heim missed an entire race due to an illness. He sat out of Gateway, had to watch Jesse Love try and take that car to victory lane while he was on the couch at home. Considering that Corey Heim is in his first full-time rodeo and Tricon Garage is a team that's still putting the pieces together as that top rung on the Toyota Truck Series ladder, it's impressive that they have been able to say it's Heim time. Now this 11 core has one race to solidify that they can go out there and become NASCAR Truck Series champions in such a quick manner. Carson Hosevar is not only built different considering what he's done in the NASCAR Cup Series in the Legacy Motor Club number 42, but he is also a driver built for the NASCAR Truck Series. Perhaps he learned all these valuable skills to make it from Johnny Benson, the 2008 Truck Series champion. Over the last three years, we've seen the incredible growth of Carson Hosevar, whether it was making the playoffs in a Nice Motorsports truck in 2021, breaking his leg at Gateway, but instead of sinning out, he instead decided to put his truck on the pole. The biggest problem for Carson Hosevar was, in the words of Ryan Priest, Don't do that. Race with respect. Don't wreck the guy on the outside of you trying to win your first race. It doesn't get you anywhere. He just made so many mistakes, said the wrong things, and on many occasions would intentionally spin out or right rear hook a driver into the wall. Carson Hosevar seemed that he was a driver that was incredibly childish, but we have seen in this 2023 season that Hosevar has silenced the haters. He's cleaned up his act to where he has now become one of the top drivers unanimously in the NASCAR Truck Series. His four wins this season are the most of any driver in the field, and he has won at a distinct amount of racetracks. Texas, you can say that was Mickey Mouse, but a win's a win, right? Nashville being able to win on a concrete racetrack, Richmond winning on a short track to close out the regular season, and then going out and riding the wall at Homestead to clinch his spot in the championship four. Carson Hosevar and this Nice Motorsports organization, they are built different. And now we're going to find out, is Carson Hosevar built for the moment? The pressure is going to be on Carson Hosevar to go out there and make sure that he enters the NASCAR Cup Series 
with Spire Motorsports in 2024 as a top prospect, a NASCAR champion. The growth and development of Carson Hosevar would come full circle if he is to win Friday night in Phoenix. Some might say the NASCAR truck series doesn't have talent because trucks are a mess, all the drivers just run each other over and don't race with any respect. Grant Enfinger is the anomaly to that thinking. He's an ARCA champion. He's also the 2019 regular season champion and a driver that races with a ton of respect. There's a reason why Grant Enfinger is at the front of the field almost every single week and that is because Grant Enfinger knows how to drive a race truck. That has been yet again the case with GMS racing this season as Grant Enfinger is the best of the Midwest. It all started at Kansas. Grant Enfinger went out and dominated that race to get his first win. Gateway was a bit more pressure packed. You had Zane Smith and Ty Majeski going for it all. You could say this is an example of the truck series being a shit show, but when it came to that final restart, Grant Enfinger nailed it perfectly, raced Christian Eckes clean, and was able to celebrate on the front stretch with confetti pouring down on him as the winner of the second leg of the Triple Truck Challenge. For sure though, his most convincing win was his dominant performance in the second race of the playoffs. No driver had raced at Milwaukee in decades, so it was a fresh, clean slate for every driver. And what Brent Enfinger did was just kick everybody's ass, setting himself up to do what a veteran driver is expected to do. Go out there and get consistent finishes. And with two top five finishes, Grant Enfinger returns to the championship race for the first time since 2020. Grant Enfinger is an incredible talent. Maybe if he had more money or a name, he'd be able to move up to the Xfinity or Cup Series. And unfortunately, this might be the last time we see Grant Enfinger race competitively in NASCAR. Keep in mind, GMS Racing is going to be closing up shop in terms of the truck operation after this race. This wouldn't be the first time that Grant Enfinger made the championship and then watched Daytona from his couch, so Grant Enfinger knows that this could be his last chance. I have no doubt that Grant Enfinger and Jeff Hensley, they are going to work hard getting things right in the simulator. Grant Enfinger is going to go out and put out the fastest laps so that he can go into that race and give Jeff Hensley the correct adjustments to try to leave it all out there and win the championship. He might do all that and still end up watching the season opening truck race from his couch. However, I don't think he'd have any complaints if he reclined on his recliner, turned on the television, and right next to him on that coffee table is the trophy to solidify that he is a NASCAR Truck Series champion. Adversity has been the name of the game for Ben Rhodes. You would think that he would be the number one guy at Thor Sport, considering the last three years being the winningest driver going out there and getting the 2021 championship. Instead, Thor Sport has compromised his championship run by switching the crew chief three different times on that number 99 truck. And I don't know what it is. Is it organizational politics at Thor Sport? Is it for throwing a ton of money and trying to make sure that their prospect that's also a massive influencer goes out there and has the best opportunity that money can buy? What we've seen is that Ben Rose doesn't check all the boxes apparently to have an elite crew chief. As talent, you need a lot more than that. However, when it comes to building a resume to say that I'm a championship contender, it doesn't matter how much experience you have or if you check off a certain amount of DEI boxes. What matters most is what skills you have and how you are able to adapt under pressure. What we've seen out of Ben Rose this season is a championship mentality because he's been through a lot but yet every single week he's up front leading laps winning races getting the finishes necessary to make the playoffs and rise to the adversity that hard work and perseverance led Thor Sport to think after 19 races and say you know what Ben Rhodes is actually pretty good why not we do this crazy idea and pair him up with the crew chief that won him the championship it's genius right here, and in this round, Ben Rhodes was benefited from having Rich Lucius to where they were able to go into Homestead and advance to the championship for the third straight season. 
When Ben Rhodes won his first championship in 2021, it was the title that put him on the map. No longer was his reputation as a driver stained from his disappointing run at Junior Motorsports in the Xfinity Series. If Ben Rhodes goes out there and win his second championship, this is going to show that Ben Rhodes is the top driver in the NASCAR Truck Series right now. A veteran driver that's in his prime and someone that is able to adapt to whatever is thrown at him, whether it's new crew chiefs, whether it's making rivals, Ben Rhodes is able to rise to the occasion and win multiple championships. 22 races for the NASCAR Truck Series has given us four drivers, four completely unique stories, but they all have one end goal in mind, and that is to put their name on the NASCAR Hall of Fame plaque they have of all the NASCAR Truck Series champions. So who do I think is going to do that in NASCAR's 75th anniversary? For the NASCAR Truck Series, it is going to be the driver that I see has the most that he is fighting for in this championship. Grant Enfinger doesn't know what he's going to do in 2023, and a lot of the team members at GMS probably don't have jobs lined up either. So. I believe that this organization is going to be the most hungry. They know that they are working to make sure that they are in the Truck Series garage in 2024. So with that drive and also the sentimental aspect of GMS Racing closing their doors, theoretically this 23 team is the most hungry and the most devoted to go out there and make sure that they win that championship. And it would also make sense for Grant and Finger to win considering that his two teammates are running throwbacks to the other two GMS championships. How fitting would it be that Grant and Finger would race against those two trucks on Friday night and ultimately go out and make it 23 in 23 by winning the championship. So if you guys enjoyed this video, NRF Productions is in the home stretch. We've got Cup and Xfinity Spotters Guides, as well as the season finale, which is going to come out before the Phoenix race. And other than that, this is Nathan for Digital Gas House, Life's a Beach, and then you drive.